Welcome to our College Briefing program, where we dive into the latest and most interesting happenings around the globe with a touch of lightheartedness. Let's jump right in. Starting off in the chilly north, Minnesota's high school graduation rates are showing more of a shuffle than a shuffleboard slide, with a slight dip to 83.3% in 2023. It seems the tracking of students has been a bit like trying to follow a squirrel in a forest, especially when they switch schools. There's a bit of a mixed bag in the data, with slight decreases for Black, Asian, and Latino students, and those learning English. On the flip side, white students and those identifying as two or more races have seen a bump in their rates. It's like a seesaw of statistics. Jumping over to Japan, it turns out that 60% of workers would rather skip the office cherry blossom viewing party. Who would have thought? It seems the allure of pink petals and picnic blankets doesn't quite cut it when it feels like an extension of the workday. With over half of the respondents cherishing their private life over work events, it's clear that the Hanami might need a bit of rebranding. Maybe adding some karaoke might spice things up? And in a plot twist that might have some of us checking our piggy banks, several New England universities and colleges are breaking the $90,000 barrier for total costs in the upcoming school year. Yes, you heard that right, $90,000. Institutions like Yale University and Boston University are leading the charge into these uncharted financial waters. It's enough to make you wonder if they're including a free spaceship with tuition. That's a wrap on today's news snippets. For those of you who've ever thought about skipping a cherry blossom party or are currently contemplating how to afford a $90,000 education, you're not alone. Please stay tuned for more detailed content on these stories. Minnesota's graduation rates mostly flat in 2023 after pandemic rebound. Yahoo! Minnesota's four-year high school graduation rate has dipped slightly this year to 83.3%. The Minnesota Department of Education says that errors in tracking students, particularly when they transfer schools, contributed to the decrease. The data also reveals slight decreases in graduation rates for Black, Asian, and Latino students, as well as students learning English. The graduation rate for Black students reached its highest rate ever in 2022 at 73.5% although it dipped to 72.1% in 2023. The graduation rate for white students and students identifying as two or more races increased in 2023. Most Japanese workers would rather skip the office cherry blossom party, survey. South China Morning Post. A new report from Japan indicates that 60% of employees attending the company Hanami, or cherry blossom viewing party with co-workers, would rather be somewhere else. The study, conducted by Job Soken, the research unit of career consultancy firm Libwa, found that respondents see the event as an extension of work and would prefer to spend time with close friends and family. The study also found that 51% of people prioritize their private life over work matters and 47.6% do not want to use their limited vacation days for a work-related event. Some New England universities and colleges break $90,000 barrier for total cost in upcoming school year. CNN Several New England universities and colleges have reached a pinnacle of at least $90,000 for undergraduate tuition and costs starting this fall. Yale University, Tufts University, Boston University, BU, and Wellesley College are among a few private institutions that will top this year's costs for tuition, housing and other expenses, according to the school's websites. At JNU, student flame flickers against India's Modi before national vote. al Khathera. India's Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, has lost the election for the student body of Jawaharlal Nehru University, JNU, an institution that has been a target of political attacks from the right. JNU held its election for the JNU Students' Union, NUSU, last week, with left-wing groups dominant. The results came out on April 4, 2021. Dunan Jay, the new NUSU president, said the election was a referendum against the right wing. The BJP has long targeted JNU as an anti-national hub. The party has accused the university of breaking India, whilst students and alumni have been charged with sedition and terrorism. The BJP's attempts to change JNU have had little effect. The party has tried to change the university's demographics and ideology but has failed. The BJP has tried to defame JNU, calling it a den of antinationals, but this has not worked. The ABVP, the BJP student organization, was defeated in the NUSU election. Republican Committee to Select Buck's Likely Replacement adding a challenge to Boebert's campaign. Associated Press. A panel of Colorado Republicans will select a candidate Thursday who will likely serve out the final months of U.S. Representative Ken Buck's term, and could pose a challenge to Representative Lauren Boebert's bid for another term in Congress. It's an unusual and confusing twist in a closely watched primary race for a district the far-right Republican Boebert has not represented previously. 
Whoever the committee chooses is expected to prevail in the special election against the Democratic nominee, finish Buck's term and reinforce Republicans' slim majority in the U.S. House. Schools in the path of April's total solar eclipse prepare for a natural teaching moment. Associated Press Schools across America are preparing for April's total solar eclipse, the best one in years, with lessons on science, literacy and culture. Some schools are even organizing group viewings to experience the awe of daytime darkness and learn about the astronomy behind it together. Native Americans, for example, may view the total eclipse as something sacred. Some schools are keeping students in for the day to educate and engage them in activities related to the eclipse, such as crafts, games and models. Harvard removes human skin binding from book after years of showing it off. The Sydney Morning Herald Harvard University has announced that it has removed a book with a binding made of human skin from its library and will be exploring options for a respectful disposition of the remains. The book, a 19th-century French treatise on the human soul, had been brought out for show and tell and used for hazing new employees. The university acknowledged that its handling of the book had failed to meet ethical standards and apologized for its actions. The decision to remove the binding follows a pressure campaign led by a prominent scholar and an open letter calling for the binding to be removed and the remains given a proper burial. Dave Bowling, the genius of Mark Madness, few loyalty, persistence and consistency keep Gonzaga in the championship spotlight. Yahoo! Gonzaga basketball success is down to the rare stability of its coach, Mark Few. The team's success in the tournament has proved that the Zags program is no longer in decline, as was predicted in January 2022. Mark Few's ability to adapt to a changing environment and his decision to not move on to wealthier universities has ensured the program remains successful. Bird flu found in U.S. dairy cows raises concerns over potential spread to Australia. ABC. The United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, has confirmed that bird flu has been discovered in dairy herds in Kansas and Texas. The USDA has said that the risk to humans is low, as milk will be destroyed and sick cows will not be used for meat. The U.S. meat industry is also trying to calm consumer fears by stating that properly prepared beef is safe to eat. This development is not the first time that bird flu has been found in mammals, as it has been found in polar bears, South American seals and in Antarctica. Chinese scientists plan surface-to-air missile with 2,000 km kill range. South China Morning Post Chinese researchers have designed an ultralong-range surface-to-air missile with a kill range of over 2,000 km, according to a paper published in the Chinese-language Journal of Graphics. The missile, which would be able to shoot down early warning aircraft and bombers, is designed for low production costs and maximum convenience for daily operations. The missile is 8 meters long and weighs 2.5 tons, considerably smaller and lighter than the 10 meters and 4 tons set out by the People's Liberation Army PLA. The missile would use a solid rocket motor to launch before using a ramjet engine to propel it in the upper atmosphere. The missile would be guided by real-time data from reconnaissance satellites, detonating its warhead when it reaches an effective kill range. The researchers said the technology is of great significance for maintaining regional and global peace and stability. China has been developing its anti-access area denial capabilities to cope with potential conflicts in the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea. A teen who stabbed fellow Perth student jailed after diary entries reveal murderous intent. The Sydney Morning Herald. A 15-year-old student who stabbed a fellow student at a school in Perth has been sentenced to two years and seven months behind bars. The student, who cannot be named for legal reasons, was charged with aggravated unlawful wounding, but this was later upgraded to aggravated unlawful wounding with intent to harm after diary entries were discovered that suggested a plan to commit multiple murders at the school before turning the knife on themselves. Police found entries in the diary which included a desire to cause as much pain as possible and scar others. Powerball jackpot increases to $935 million after no one wins the top prize. The Globe and Mail. The Powerball jackpot has increased to an estimated $935 million after no one matched the six numbers drawn on Wednesday night. The jackpot has been growing for months, and there have been 37 consecutive drawings without a winner. The odds of winning are 1 in 292.2 million. The next drawing will take place on Saturday night. Powerball is played in 45 states plus Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Sydney Shore School mourns death of year 11 boy. The Sydney Morning Herald. A year 11 student at Sydney Shore School has died, prompting shock and sadness within the school community. The school has offered support and counseling to the student's family, as well as to fellow students and staff. The cause of death has not been disclosed, but it is believed that the student died at a sports function. 
The Sydney Church of England Grammar School, known as Shore School, is an all-boys private school with approximately 1,600 students. Judge seems skeptical of Hunter Biden's request to dismiss tax charges. The Globe and Mail. A U.S. judge has expressed doubt over Hunter Biden's attempt to dismiss his criminal tax evasion case on the grounds that he was selectively targeted for prosecution due to political pressure. At a hearing in Los Angeles, U.S. District Judge Mark Scarcey questioned whether Biden's lawyers had any evidence that prosecutors had been influenced by Republicans, other than the timeline, which demonstrated charges were filed after months of accusations by Republicans in Congress and Donald Trump. Hunter Biden, the first child of a sitting president to face criminal charges, pleaded not guilty to failing to pay $1.4 million in taxes between 2016 and 2019. What are the spending problems facing government? The Independent. The UK government must invest in long-term planning and infrastructure across sectors including health, defence and nuclear, according to Dame Meg Hillier, chair of the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee, PAC. In an annual report, Hillier identified a lack of forward thinking, citing poor infrastructure in hospitals, schools and prisons and a skills deficit across departments. The report also highlighted issues in healthcare, education and defense and recommended greater resilience, risk management and understanding. Hillier argued that government departments had failed to provide long-term investment, leading to present and future problems. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.